Hey guys, it's Space Sims, and we are back with more Piel Fiore 1920s. So we are just continuing Gilbert's route uh, in chapter two now. So yeah, and we're back at the manor because. You know, people are trying to kill me. And holy goddamn shit, I just turned my volume literally down two seconds ago and it's like right back up. I do not know why my computer is motherfucking possessed like this. Grammy bonkers. Anyway. I set down my belongings in the familiar room, letting out a heavy sigh. If I remember correctly, the first time I came here was when I was targeted last year. Happening again. I felt guilty about burdening Gil. You know he's happy about it, though. You're like, I'm burdening you. And he's like, no, I'm really fucking happy you're here. I mean, not that you're being attacked or targeted, but, like, that you're here, you know? Considering that someone was after me, my being here would only mean trouble for him. In fact, I was going to be bothering the whole Visconti family now. Yes? It's me. I'm sorry, but can I talk to you for a bit before bed? Oliver's here, too. I quickly opened the door. Oh, Oliver. I'm glad you're safe. I heard you weren't injured, but... I don't remember Oliver's fucking voice that we gave him, like, like a couple parts ago, but anyway. You were worried about me? It's only natural. You've been involved in dangerous incidents before. How could I feel nothing when your life's at risk? Um, Oliver is fucking adorable. Stop it. You were worried about me, Oliver? He's like, it just, what? Oh, don't you just want to hug him? He would probably absolutely, if you hugged him, be like, the not know what to do and he would just totally freeze statue still like uh, what I love Oliver <laughs> thank you Oliver you can rest easy here I'll be able to protect you just like before sorry for causing you all such trouble I'm doing this because I want to you got nothing to worry about it was a comfort to hear him speak so assuredly despite that I I do understand how you feel. If it still bothers you, you can pay Gilbert for the protection he's offering. Hey! I knew Oliver well enough to know that he wasn't referring to money or physical goods. Oh! I mean, Oliver! Jesus! I'll definitely pay Gilbert. Do, do we need to tip Oliver, too? <laughs> but I wasn't sure what payment would do. After some thought, I decided to simply ask Gil what he might want in exchange. <laughs> the look on Gilbert's face is like, <laughs> This is why I hired Oliver. <laughs> Yo, what would make you happy? Huh? You're not really going to pay me, are you? I am. I'll do anything you want. Oh, girl. Oh, ho! <laughs> I mean, you had to fucking know that was coming. I'll do anything you want. Oh, girl. I mean, it's not like we already don't do anything he wants. It's not like this would be a first. And Oliver's over there like, Oliver, you were the one who suggested I pay him and not in money. Well, we said Oliver wouldn't expect money. So I'm just saying, Oliver, you started this. Oliver closed his eyes as though he felt immense pity for me. Yeah, he's like, you shouldn't have said that. I mean, again, it's not like, as much as I act like an innocent, sweet, naive church girl, um, I'm having sex on the regular with this man. So I'm just saying, it's not like I'd be like, oh, God, what? You want to do what to me? I'd be like, oh, so like last weekend? I was like, I got some ideas. So like that thing last weekend or like the one that was a couple, like the other month? That, that, that one with the, yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. And Oliver's over there like, oh my God, why did I suggest this? Oliver, you dug your own grave here. We also did by saying we'd give him anything. So. His reaction came as a surprise, given that he was the one who had suggested it. I was beginning to feel concerned. This must be my lucky day. Well then. Pins me up against a wall. I felt his breath in my ear as he spoke. Oh, poor Oliver has to witness this. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! He is extremely fucking hot when he takes off his eye patch, okay? Like, I mean, the eye patch is kind of sexy, sure, but, like, he takes it off and he's beautiful, but, like, we are in a bathtub! I 
I really expected like a. I really wanted that fucking like pin me up against a wall CG. But like now I'm naked in a bathtub with you CG. I'm here for this shit. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh good god. What are we five minutes in? Shit. I'm gonna need a bucket to pour over myself. <laughs> Where are you hiding, space? My body went tense at his voice. At tense, but I know she is hiding like she's like, oh no, oh, is it cold? Or you can't be ashamed of your body or afraid of him seeing you naked because I'm pretty sure he's seen every fucking inch. There was nowhere for me to escape now. Oh my! Oh my! It's it's. He held me in his arms and chuckled as I stumbled over my words. Seriously? Okay, we've got a knee. Oh my god, we're seeing Gilbert's knee. This is highly inappropriate. Ah! Fan yourselves, ladies. And the shoulder going on. I mean, that's all we need. You know what's really sad about this? Is seriously, like, you're playing a Tomei games, and this is what you... We don't need him totally... No. Shoulder, knee. We're good. <laughs> In the first one, what did they give us? Dante with a cat. Just petting a kitten, and we were like, sold. I'm done. Fit. All I need. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs> oh, they really know what they're doing with this art. Oh, good lord. Anyway. Not embarrassed. Not like I've never seen you like this before. I mean, true. But this is completely different. Taking a bath together? I feel like I'm going to die from embarrassment. Okay, that's a little extreme. A brightly lit bathroom was different from a darkened bedroom at night. Not only because he could see me clearly, but also because I could see him. Okay. <sighs> I mean, a part of me gets it like, uh, bright ass, shining light, seeing every inch is different than the shadows at night. Okay, I'll give you that. But it's this whole, I've got to be super embarrassed. And, oh my God, I'm seeing him naked. Girl, stop it. A little bit of embarrassment I can understand, but it's going to push my limits. It's really going to just be like, oh my god. I mean, I get it, because like, again, the lights out, dark sheets rolling around is different than like, bright ass fucking fluorescent lights in a bathroom, although this is 1920s, so like, not fluorescent lighting, but still, bright ass lights in a bathroom, where you're like, everything is exposed, and like, it's also different when you're like, in the heat of shit, in the dark, and standing there like, oh, we're just standing here staring. Like, you know what I mean? It is slightly different. So I get the slight awkwardness. And that's fine, but let's simmer it down. Let's not be, oh, totally about it. Like, this is just awkward. Yeah, but that's different. And this is a little awkward. And I'm a little embarrassed. That's a little embarrassment, not, oh my god, I've never touched a boy embarrassment levels. Okay? We need to simmer it down a little. At that moment, he suddenly let out a sigh behind me. Seeing that bashful look on your face feels nice, to be honest. But I sort of regret it now. I thought I was being pretty reasonable when I made my request. Huh? I chose a payment method that'd be easy to do, you know. You want to know what I really wanted? Uh, no. Maybe next time. I want to know what you really I shook my head in response, and in turn, Gil embraced me even more strongly. Well then, better get you out of here before the heat does you in. Ah! Just as I was expecting to finally be released, an unexpected sensation made me cry out. G oh, Gil, wh what are you? Hmm? Isn't the purpose of the baths to scrub yourself clean? But! My way of saying thanks for the payment. You don't mind, do you? I'm, what is he doing? With another low whisper in my ear, I felt the strength of my body leaving me. His strong hands gently traced across my skin. N no, not here! Hey, hey. There's a bath, you know. How can I not finish the job? Tell me where I should start, Signorina. <laughs> oh, good lord. I mean, I understand you being a little flushed from some of the shit he's saying. I'm like, oh! So I get that. I can't believe you, Gil. The sound of water sloshing in the tub echoed against the walls. I mean, especially if he's like breathing in your ear. Jesus. 
As I was about to drown in my own pleasure, he held me tighter, determined to keep me with him. The minute when I said I regretted asking you, so let me take responsibility. Forgive me. His voice was filled with an intensity that couldn't be hidden. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he's real sorry. I do like the fact that he's like, I'll apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I understand that level of embarrassment. Like, oh, oh. And blushing because you're giddy from it, but like, you know. He swept me up from the bathtub and brought me straight to bed. Oh, damn, I bet he did. My mind was consumed by thoughts of only him and his sweet whispers in my ear. Despite being in bed so early, we didn't fall asleep until much later. Like, I mean, I'm not disappointed with how romantic this game is, despite the fact that someone's trying to kill me. Like, good God. I spent the entire night in his arms. I... Yeah, okay. But, like... Thank you, Jesus, for that fucking CG, because he is sexy as shit without his eye patch on, and, like, I'm sorry, but, like, shoulder and knee. Like I said, that's all we need. We're simple folk. Okay? Fuck! All we needed was just, like, without no eye patch, and we're like, no, I'm done. <laughs> He's not even my favorite. <laughs> Although I do remember enjoying his route immensely. You know what I mean? And, like, I gotta be fair, like, Yes, unfortunately, Orlock is my least favorite just because he's too sweet and innocent for me. You know, he's got the sweet little baby face and I can't do that. Like, I don't know. There's just something when they look all sweet and innocent that it's like, eh, none of my switches are going to flip. I know his route was good, but like, seriously, like, maybe a lot of people don't like Henry, but I was really into the Phantom of the fucking Casino the second I saw the fucking game case. I'm like, you can't throw him on the top. Of the, and the cover fucking art, and then tell me I can't date this motherfucker. He's wearing a mask. He's fabulous. <laughs> but like Henry, freaking Gil, Yang, Nicola, Dante, all fine as fuck. The art's beautiful in this game. So like, I'm not gonna complain. Ah. Ah. Anyway. The next morning, after we'd finished our slightly late breakfast, Oliver cut in a little reservedly. Oh, and then you have Oliver. I fucking love his weird little bunny mouse look. I don't know what it is. I love him so much. Gilbert, regarding the report. Oliver glanced over at me with a hint of concern. Maybe it's something he doesn't want me to hear. If you'll excuse me, I'll be heading back to my room. No, you should stay too. It's not the kind of thing we'd want a senorita to hear, but I want you to be aware of what's going on in Berlin now. Noticing his seriousness, I nodded in response. If you don't mind, I would like to know. Gil nodded and continued. Found another body in Krita. We're still investigating the cause of death. I know this is just speculation, but... Does this have something to do with the killings in Strano recently? We're investigating based on that assumption... The bodies began to appear in Strano, then in Valeno. But a few days ago, a body was found in Falce. The church in Arco was attacked as well. Murder seemed to be occurring all over town. We compiled the list of victims to confirm their jobs, connections to the Mafia, and more. There's nothing that links these victims together. Possible they've all been senseless murders from the beginning. What do you mean? Never mind. The, the thought just came to me. There's no evidence to prove it, though. He looked serious as Oliver spoke, seeming to think about the incidents even further. Another thing, one of our men was involved in an altercation with the police over collections in Krita. Wait a minute. I heard from Marco that the police have been treating the Mafia differently recently. Yes, that's precisely it. The Burlone police have been coming down more severely on the Mafia over the slightest of matters. And this isn't the only... Oh, this isn't... Oh, this is not... Good God, I can't read. This is not only a problem with the Visconti. It seems as though the Falzone and the Lao Shu are being targeted as well. It appears the new governor is a genuine fascist, so I'm not surprised at how quickly the movement's accelerating throughout Puglia. Puglia? Puglia? Puglia yeah, just sounds like such a weird name. Anyway. Fascist! A supporter of the dictatorship of Mussolini and the fascism philosophy that informs his policies. The idea of it made me feel uneasy. 
But Berlone's still backed by the church. Call it cocky, but it's not the cops' bit. It's not in the cops' best interest to give it such a hard time. Yes, and the police here are well aware, which is why I'm hoping they'll see reason and prevent disputes from escalating. Ah, uh, here we go. After story's coming up. Listening to Gil and Oliver reminded me of the reality of the situation in Berlone and the changing status of the mafia. Police too. Uh, yeah, okay, we do all of them. Marco. It's a hot spot, isn't it? Yeah, so we should have a few of our guys. Hey, any progress yet? I forget Marco's voice. I can't remember everybody's fucking voice in this. Like, one of these days. Oh, Marco had an older man voice. I can't do it right now. I don't know why. On seeing me, they clammed up, exchanged looks, and then left in a hurry. That's not his voice. But he wasn't quite old. Well, well, well. Seems everyone hates me now. Marco, let's talk outside for a bit. They all have similar voices. I don't know why everybody in that, like... <laughs> I am a failure in my voices, but it's fine. You sure you want to be seen with me? Chief says the key info should be withheld from guys like me with connections to the mob. Doesn't matter, I don't care what they think. For better or worse, huh? Robbie brushed off my mutterings and continued. The governor's directed a change in our stance against the Mafia. His orders are to be aggressive, even if that means falsifying charges so we can arrest them. He also believes that the recent killings are no doubt linked to the Mafia. Figured something like this was gonna happen. He doesn't get that this town has its own way of doing things. Our involvement tends to make things worse. And when that happens, it's the townsfolk who suffer, not the higher-ups. Sorry, I forgot the governor's here. It's fine. Even I understand the logic behind your reasoning, Marco. Not surprising that they can't understand how different things are here. Especially... His father. His father? His father. Wait. Like, I understand the logic behind your reasoning. It's not surprising they can't understand how different things are, especially his father. Because, like, Marco kept saying, oh, he's your, he's your, and you know he's related to Roberto, right? But then it's like, when he says his father, it's like, is it supposed to be, like, my father? Like, is it Roberto's father that's the governor? I figured it was, like, his uncle or something, but, like, surprising they can't understand how different things are here especially his it's just a weird phrasing because you're like who like you know what i mean unless it's supposed to be Ooh, whose father are they talking about like i'm not sure if that wasn't translated wrong we'll figure it out it's okay rumors eugene <laughs> i don't know why when this backdrop popped up i was like fucking eugene yeah things have been going downhill lately I heard the church was attacked recently, too. <laughs> what is this world coming to? But why the church? You know why. There's a girl at the church who's close to the Visconti family. Hey, you mind if I join the conversation? <laughs> I forget you, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I cannot keep them all straight in my fucking head. Oh, good lord, anyway. Hmm? You're not from around here, are you? Right, I just moved here recently. So about the church... You said there's a certain someone there close to the Visconti? Everyone in town knows that the Visconti boss has a sweetheart at the church. Oh, that's so. Well, I suppose the lady must be devilishly seductive. Oh no, she's quite an adorable girl, in fact. Devilish is not how I would describe her. She's a good girl, very kind. Rather angelic looking, in fact. Ah, uh, let me guess. Long blonde hair? That's right. Oh, I see. So now he knows who we are. Listening to Gil and Oliver reminded me of the reality of the situation in Berlone and the changing status of the Mafia. 
The Mafia had been in this town for as long as I could remember. It was unsettling to imagine that what allowed our town to prosper could soon be demolished. Thank you for teaching me again today, Oliver. I've learned a lot. Oliver had been giving me more work than before since I would be staying at the manor for a while. I jumped at the chance to have something else to do than sit quietly alone in my room. No, although I maintain that hands-on training is the best way to learn, you've done more than your share deserving my thanks. It's as though I now have a competent assistant. <laughs> oh, Oliver. <clears throat> hug him. I really just want to hug him because I know he wouldn't know what to do. And he'd frickin' tense up for a few minutes, and then you'd walk away, and Gil would come into the thing and be like, what the fuck is wrong with Oliver? You're like, is he still just standing in the hall? Yeah, I hugged him, like, five minutes ago. Why do you keep doing that to him? I don't know, it's just fun. Like, I would just do it, because, you know, every time he'd be like, uh, what? And he would just get stuck there for a little while, because he's probably not used to people hugging him. So I would just do it. It's like, because, Oliver, you deserve to be hugged, but also, it's kind of funny to watch you tense up and freak out a little bit. I love Oliver. Having finished our work earlier than planned, we headed to the lounge to take a break. Oh, we just flipped right on back. So, what do you got for me today? Hear anything good out there? Yeah, and I saw the guy you told me about before. And I found him in Arca this morning. Looks like he was headed to Creta or Valeno. I tried to trail him, but he ran off all of a sudden. Luca and Gil were in the lounge when we arrived. Luca's eyes glimmered upon seeing us come in. Sis, you're here! Yeah, I'll be staying here for a while until things settle down. Luca, you don't have any plans today, right? Why don't you stay for dinner? Hooray! I'm the one to talk to Sis, so that works great. I know exactly how you feel. But don't you forget, Luca. She's my girl. For for really, Gil? Enough playtime. You'd better get going. Don't you have work to do? Oliver's nagging seemed to get Gil to his feet, though he did so with a touch of dismay. Oliver starts... <laughs> Everybody's starting to sound like Dante right now, but it's whatever. Before walking past us through the entryway, he stopped in front of me. Well, I'm off. We got a meeting tonight. It's been a while since I've seen them. So you're going to be home late? And leaving you waiting? I'll finish up and come back as soon as possible. Oh, and leave you waiting? Leave you waiting? He'd wink at us if... He's winking at us with his left eye, which is by the eye. <laughs> I'll finish up and come back as soon as possible. Gil looked at me somewhat wistfully for a moment, then kissed me gently on the forehead. <laughs> Did they kill Dira Tore in this one, too? Do you think? Because, like, the whole thing, he was evil and, like, he disappeared. Because, like, Nicola's dead and, like... I mean, Henry was never really around in any of the other routes. He was just, there was this mysterious side character that you were like, I know there's something going on with you, motherfucker, because you're on the cover of this game. Today, it was only Luca and I who were sitting down for dinner. Oliver had an urgent job to attend to and left the manor in quite a hurry. Just by looking at him and the others, I could see that they were busy in all sorts of ways. Our pot roast for dinner was simmered in vegetables, herbs, and red wine, resulting in beef so tender that it fell apart. It's delicious. I'm not even a pot roast person, but it sounds delicious. There were fried shredded potatoes on the side, accompanied by tomato sauce and honey mustard for dipping. Oh, honey mustard. Yeah, I forgot to mention it, but me and my mom just moved to Krita. Really? The place is small and shabby, but it's like paradise compared to Strano. It took forever to find somewhere to rent without my mom's help, and because no one could vouch for me. But the landlord said we could move in as long as I pay the rent on time. He's like eight. That's so cute. So glad to hear that, Luca. Yeah. Despite being quite hardened for his age, he couldn't hide how happy he was about it. It's just so cute. <laughs> He's like, I found a better place for me and my mom to move. You're eight. <laughs> I'll stop it. He might be like 10. I don't know, but still, he's baby. Oh, it's so cute. To be honest, I'd already heard of Luca's move to Krita from Gil. When he learned that Luca was looking for a place to rent, he pulled some strings to make it happen. Oh, that's even cuter! We didn't love Gil already. You can't not love him for that shit. 
Of course, Gil told me not to tell Luca. Oh, you would never! Luca's so proud of himself, you wouldn't be like, Gilbert pulled some strings. You're like, let him have this. Gil, Luca, and I were the same. We all kept secrets because we want to help the people we care about. Luca pulled apart some of the tender pot roast with his fork as he continued. I only have a short... Oh, I only have a shot at a decent life because Gil lets me do work for him. Mom's... Well, she's trying her best to stay clean, but most days she doesn't feel so good. But I think she looks better now, and she isn't as violent as before. She even talks about the old days, too. Like, it's probably sad, because his mom probably got in drugs, like, not on purpose, and then gets hooked and then ruins it. You know what I mean? Like, it's a slippery slope, and... I see. Yeah, I can be relying on Gil for the rest of my life. Uh, oh, I can't be relying on Gil for the rest of my life. Uh, I don't want him to become my crutch. So I'm going to work hard and make something of myself. You know, I'm rooting for you, Luca. But don't push yourself too hard, okay? <laughs> Got it. Luca's smile was filled with confidence and pride. I'm so glad he's not dead in this room. Didn't he die in, like, Orlok's route? Like, you were like, what the fuck, game? I mean, the game killed a lot of people, and it's devastating when it kills one of your love interests, even if they're just there for eye candy on the side, right? Like, it's sad that Nickel is dead. But, like, the, <laughs> this poor fucking child. The sassy lost child had to die, and, like, no. <laughs> like, Sister Sophia getting punched. <laughs> this game is really mean to its side characters. Uh, he was earning money with his own hands. It'd be a lot of work. But I prayed for his good health and success. See, it auto-played that time, so, like... Yep. First up on the agenda was obvious. Piles of bodies in town were getting harder to ignore. Our own members have been found dead as well. Seems that the incidents are expanding to districts outside of Strano. Yet the perpetrator remains elusive. Surely the authorities have conducted their investigation with a modicum of sense. I'd be rather foolish to operate under the delusion that their deaths are unconnected, even for those who do not labor in our trade. We looked into the victims' backgrounds to see how they were connected, but nothing so far. Here the cops have no leads either. Is that so? Yang gave a slight pretense of thought before smiling in his usual way. It's actually kind of fun, because, like, the Irish accent on Yang, but also I'm trying to make... It probably comes out sounding the same, but I'm also trying to make it, like, a little less... Hey, we do the normal Irish accent, and it's a little perky, but it can't be with Yang. It has to be a little darker, a little sinister. You know what I mean? Because it's Yang, but, like, so I'm, like, trying. <laughs> I'm trying some new things with our same old voices, and it's not working. <laughs> but it's fun. God, I feel really bad if anybody has come to... Again, if you've come to this channel new, you should have watched the other one. But then again, I also feel like original Pio Fiore was, like, tame compared to, like, how fucking out of the realm we're going with the Void and doing all sorts of crazy shit. So, like, I, I've i got no explanation for the insanity that's happening here, but whatever. I may have an idea of who's behind these vicious theatrics. Naturally, that grabbed my attention, but I was more surprised to see the frustration behind his smile become invisible. The Lu Wan Hu. I don't know if I can say that in the accent. <clears throat> the Lu Huan Hu of a... Yeah, that, that worked okay. I've finally decided to put an end to me. The perpetrator's one of their commanders, Yuan. And he's leading the others in the crime. Is it their intention to kill ordinary civilians for the purpose of provoking us? No, that's simply collateral damage. After all, they haven't an idea who belongs to the Mafia or not. Yuan's a simple man, lacking the compassion to verify someone's identity before murdering them. So you're saying this Yuan guy's just going around killing whoever he finds just to stick it to you? Yes, a madman who... A madman, wouldn't you say? Yang let out a sinister chuckle. Aside from the killings, the ruins on the outskirts of town have been desecrated. 
Yang, is it possible that Yuan's also behind the incidents at the ruins and the Falzone graves? Uh, I do not know. Only that Yuan has as much interest in archaeology as I do. Which is to say, none. You're referring to the ruins in the Forest Hills, yes. What value does that place? I see. Yang and I both reached the same conclusion. So, that's where the relic lies, is it? I love his sinister smile right now. I also love the fact that, like, if you look, like, Yang's got, like, the sinister smile, like, oh, and then Dante is literally, like, has no expression on his face. I feel like this is Dante's happy face, his sad face. His, like, I mean, it's really not, but it's, like, Dante is just... <laughs> He's such a mask. Dante's expression hadn't changed, but... Orlok's silence was a dead giveaway. Dante looked over at Orlok and sighed with resignation, and looked straight at Yang. I suppose there's no point in keeping it secret now. Your assumption is correct, Yang. However, the relic is protected by a seal. It cannot be uncovered simply by digging into the earth. I see. Supposing you won't discover that the key to this town lies somewhere within it? It would only make sense that he'd try to unearth it without hesitation. And the legend likely means very little to him. Therefore, he wouldn't trouble himself with the drudgery of breaking this seal. About the Falzone family's graves, and they have nothing to do with the sacred relic. Probably just out of spite. I see I've angered you, Falzone. A mask so easily shattered by words is not the fitting of a Mafia boss. If you want search the ruins for the relic, only to find himself empty-handed. He'd naturally assume it was hidden elsewhere. And if you knew that the relic gave the Falzone family the rights to Berlon, then his next thought would have been to check the other places with ties to their family. Had you left your gates open? Might have even dug up your flower garden. <laughs> Hang with the Irish accent is really fucking fun, I'm not gonna lie, because it's just. It's so wrong! It's so wrong! So wrong! And that's why she was almost abducted. Odds are likely that the grand title of the Key Maiden aroused his interest. Although he may not continue his pursuit. Why do you say that? Well, think for a moment. Should he desire something of the fall zones, where should he look? The only one sure to have any meaningful information is Falzone himself, not some common girl from the church. Regardless, they nearly abducted her. Can't rule out the possibility that they'll strike again. Are they gonna kill Dante? I know it's not Dante's story, but look, look, look. Don't. <laughs> Simplify your mindset. The church girl will be easier to capture than you, Falzone. Well, that's why you untried her first. As I've said, he is a simple man. Taking her to the Visconti Manor and she'll be and we'll be watching over her for the time being. Meaning the risk far outweighs the reward. There's no additional value in pursuing her. If they'll breed if they'll be breaching the Berlone Mafia's defenses to capture anyone, it'll be Falzone himself, as aiming for him would actually be worth the effort. Additionally, the Falzone family no longer has Francesca in their ranks. To that end, my impartial opinion is that the Visconti's defenses are undoubtedly more robust. This may not relate directly to our discussion, but I have some information to share about her. His Excellency has stated that the seal... Uh, <clears throat> His Excellency has stated that the seal to the relic can no longer be broken, even with her. The unexpected information stunned us all into silence. Oh, he didn't tell me the reason. I can only speak of the conviction with which he told me that... Oh, that things have changed. At the very least, I understand that means her role as the Key Maiden will have no effect. 
and that's true, then the odds of them trying to nab her again are close to none. Even so, they were attacking people randomly regardless of whether they were Mafia or not. Just because the Key Maiden business was over didn't mean she shouldn't be left without... Oh, she... Doesn't mean she should be left to live without any protection. One must see this legend as a way to pass the time. Digging here and there under cover of darkness would be something of a game to him. His true objective is vengeance. Whatever the case, you want his committed hostile acts against the Falzone. He will pay dearly for it. Yeah, we can't let this guy go. They desecrated graves, attacked a sister, and tried to abduct space. Any vengeance to be had is now going to be us against them. Indeed. I will kill you on my own two hands. From the looks of it, Yang and Yuan had more history than the Lao Shu and the... Lu Huan Hu? Lu Huan Hu. Lu Huan Hu. I, it's going to take me a long time before I get Lu Huan Hu down in any voice, so just... The church is aware of the situation here, but they still have their image to consider. They can't appear too invested in a single town. Which is why I'll do what I can to help. Let me know if you need anything, need information or otherwise. Yeah, we'll be counting on you, Orlok. Yes. Not too fast, sorry. The Lu Huan Hu is our common enemy, and they're wreaking havoc in our territory. I got that one. We looked around at the others gathered here in the church. Right now, we got a truce ag agreeing not to fight. When do you say we amend that to state that we do fight until this is resolved? Wait, right now we've got a truce agreeing not to fight. What do you say we amend that to state that we do fight until all this is resolved? Against the other people, with each other, right? Like, fight not amongst ourselves, but band together. Agreed. I accept your proposal. We don't care. Just don't get in my way. With that, we were all in agreement. First thing is to find Yuan and his men. We'll set up rounds in each district to prevent more deaths. And we're killed too, so I suggest you keep them in groups as much as possible, during their patrols as well as in business matters. We also need to gather information on Yuan. His men are obviously here already, but is it possible he's here as well? Considering his character, it's difficult to say for sure. My intuition, my intuition tells me he is. Intuition, eh? I reckon we can get a clearer answer by rounding up a few of his men and shaking the truth out of him. I'd rather stop him. He didn't say that, but I'm just imagining that's what he's thinking. Do you have something to say, Yang? No. Or be it for me to stop whatever torture you have planned. But it'll be a waste of time. What do you mean? See for yourself. The explanation would tire me. Uh, but a word of advice. You one's even more brutal than I. Which is funny, because Lee was like, uh, you one's crazy, but you're fucking crazier. Interesting. And it's so funny, because you is like, we've seen him, he's got such a sweet, doesn't he have like, sweet little baby face? That's one of the other guys, but he does have like an innocent face. He doesn't look like Yang looks like he's gonna fuck you up. It would be a lot of work, but I prayed for his good health and success. We already read that, but like sometimes it's like, eh, we'll just read it again. It's fine. Good night, Luca. <laughs> good night. See you again, sis. I saw Luca to the front door after dinner, and he ran off with a smile on his face. Luca was more cheerful than ever today. Maybe he was trying his best to put me at ease after everything that happened. Thank you, Luca. As he disappeared into the distance, I turned to head back into the manor when... Oh, no. I'm assuming this is, uh, Eugene. Well, if it isn't the non-sister from the church. A familiar voice called out to me. I mean, you knew it, right? Eugene! What's a girl like you doing in a place like this? Isn't this manor the Viscontes? I'm staying with them for a while. As a result of some issues at the church. I see. I responded vaguely, and Eugene looked up at the manor, seemingly uninterested. 
The funny thing is, is like, why would you not tell him Gilbert's your boyfriend? But I mean, I guess it's not pertinent. You're like, oh yeah, no, I'm staying here. Fucking Gilbert. Uh, yeah, on the regular. Um, depends on when he gets home, but probably tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Even I wouldn't say that shit to someone, but still. Eugene? You know, my son lives here. Oh my god, no it's not! Shut up! No! No, no, no. You're not trying to fucking tell me that Eugene is Gilbert's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck! <laughs> First of all, he doesn't look that much. He doesn't look really old enough. I guess. Oh, well, I mean, do we say middle aged or whatever? But he's got bags under his eyes. He's got like slight bags under his eyes. So that's supposed to mean he's old enough to have like Gilbert, who's in his 20s, right? Like, so you're telling me this man's like mid to late 40s? I mean, you know what? Actually. Bravo game, if you're trying to tell me that this man's old enough to have birthed Gilbert, uh, well, obviously, you know what I mean, uh, fathered him, uh, okay, because, like, he was either a teenager, or, like, you're trying to tell me, for once in anime logic, someone in their 40s isn't drawn like they're dying. You actually were like, look at how good he aged. Um, I'm, I'm here for this, as an old person myself. Thank you. For not being like, well, once you cr once you got over the age of twenty six, you're basically fucking dead. Like, you're really, you're old. And then if you're in your thirties, you're like, oh, seriously, are you okay? And once you're forty, it's like, how are you alive? Shouldn't you be dead? Because that's basically anime logic, and it's kind of offensive. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Gilbert, your dad is a dilf. <laughs> <gasps> shit I mean I knew they knew each other and you knew he was like from Chicago or whatever when he first rolled up but I like expected like and then the fact that he calls him Eugene so was Amaria Gilbert's mother and they just call her by her name but it's just funny because Gilbert was like what's up dad he was like Eugene <laughs> I'm gonna die i love this game it's so much fun holy shit oh my god how many times have we laughed i what is this the third third or fourth part and it's like i cannot this game is cracking me the fuck up this is amazing this is good i like this oh god <laughs> i was almost half expecting it to be like oh so and so like but like you knew it wasn't gonna be you knew it was gonna be guilt but anyway Gil, or rather Gilbert. What? I recall the time when I took cover from the rain with Gil. He told me that after his dad died, he and his mother returned to her hometown. Yeah, so Amaria is his mother. Yeah, okay. At least, that was the story I remembered. Because his dad is dead to him, but oh my god, this is amazing. I was beginning to feel agitated, but Eugene continued on as though he didn't notice. We split when Gil was just a kid. Back then, the best I could do was put food on the table. I hardly had any time to spare for him. And yet... Okay, this is what's funnier about this. Mag Remember the scenario when Eugene showed up and was like, Yes, come on, Gil, do me a favor, whatever. And he was like, get the fuck out, Eugene. And that was his dad. <laughs> play anymore tonight oh my god i'm gonna die i mean we got 15 minutes i'm gonna go for the rest of it but i mean i'm just dying oh god i'm gonna laugh like i am gonna like two hours from now i'm just gonna recall this in my head and i'm just gonna bust out laughing good lord as soon my wife had enough of me and she took gill and ran off is that true his story confused me gill's father being alive was questionable enough but the impression I got from Gil of his father was completely different from the image Eugene was portraying. By the time I finally found Gil, he was the boss of his own family. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Y yes He's my pride and joy. <laughs> <laughs> now we know 
his full name is Eugene Redford. <laughs> never stops being funny. Oh, this is great. I love this twist. This is amazing. Thank you, game. Oh, God. Whoever decided that we... Oh. And the are everything. Everything about this. My business is finally on track. And so I figured I'd be of some help to make... So I figured I'd be of some help to make amends for all the trouble I put him through as a kid. I mean, I came all the way from Chicago just to see him. Oh, he is so manipulating us. Don't fall for it. Eugene chuckled sadly, then let out a heavy sigh. Yeah, he's definitely... I, I don't know if he's going to turn out to be like total bad seed or just like... Good intentions does stupid shit. You know what I mean? I mean, he's definitely a little shady. What is it like? I'm a little shady because I'm trying not to get stabbed because, like, he wasn't someone, wasn't there someone that was threatening him or whatever in one of the little flashbacks or whatever? So you're like, all right, he's definitely here for, he has ulterior motives for being here. But, like, it doesn't mean that he doesn't, like, well, I actually do love my son. But, like, I have ulterior motives for being here. But he's definitely conning us right now. Okay. Like, time was much more merciless than I thought. He pretty much rejected me on sight. He doesn't want anything to do with this old man. But, you know, the thing that surprised me was how big he's gotten. Eugene... Say, little miss. Eugene looked at me with eyes that seemed to be expecting something. The fact that you're here must mean you know Gil pretty well. So please, can you get Gil to meet with me? Just for a minute. Um, I'm sorry, Eugene. Gil's out at the moment. I see. Well, I guess that's the way it goes. It seems like it wasn't in the cards tonight. Miss, I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Gil about today. You know, about me coming here to see him. Why not? I know he's still mad at me, and I'd hate to make things worse. It's strange how much I ended up telling you. But for some reason, I feel like I can trust you. But I'm sure Gil wouldn't want anyone to know he had such a pathetic father. He was also hitting on young women, young enough to be his daughter, by the way. Also, dating his son. I mean, he didn't know that at the time, I guess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say he didn't know that at the time. He knows now, obviously. But, like, um, still... Hitting on women young enough to be his daughter. Jesus Christ, Eugene. What the fuck? Eugene gave a slight wave of his hand, then turned around and walked away. He's definitely trying to con us into feeling bad for him, but... He seems so sad and lonely, but I didn't know what to make of the story I just heard. I cannot fucking believe that's Gil's dad! <laughs> this is why you don't read shit about the game beforehand. I returned to my room to reflect in silence. The stories Eugene and Gil shared with me... I didn't think of it. It was just once, but I thought I recalled Gil mentioning the name before. He was reading a report from Oliver when he suddenly muttered the name Eugene. Does that mean what Eugene said is true? He's really Gil's father? And here's the thing, Eugene's like, Don't tell Gil I came, but I feel like you should. I feel like you should be like, So, Gil, I have a question for you. Um... I don't know how you phrase this, because if you say, like, who's Eugene? Gil, I, it, this is the weirdest thing. What happened to your father again? And you just look at him, wait for him to be like, all right, he didn't actually fucking die. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought, because he stopped by earlier, so I just wanted to throw that out there. But I feel like, you know, but then again, at the same time, you have to think, well, Eugene told me not to tell Gilly was here, and I feel like you should tell Gilly was here. But if you decide to be like, all right, fine, I won't, and then I like I won't get involved. And then Gil's like, "Why didn't you tell me he came by?" And you're like, "Why didn't you tell me he? W Why did you tell me he was dead?" I was, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, still, he obviously he's dead to him. So you know, not his father passed away, but could he have been alive all along? I mean, he very well could have because he just showed up. I quickly jumped up from my seat and hurried to the door. Welcome back, Gil. Huh. Might well, be asleep by now. Figured I'd come check to let you know I was back. Why'd you caught me before bed? Peace? What is it? Oh, nothing. Everything's fine. I guess I'm just a bit sleepy. I see. In that case, I better go. 
You should get some rest tonight. But I want you to hold me. You gave me a goodnight kiss before I even realized it. Oh, you... Ew. You should at least be allowed to goodnight... A good... I should at least be a le... Wow, 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 wow. I can't read. I should at least be allowed a goodnight kiss. Unless... You want me to sleep with you. Just sleep? Nah, that'd be too hard. Maybe a little more. Really, Gil? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm gonna have some time to myself tonight. See you in the morning, Signorina. Okay. This bright smile made my made me smile in return. Or made me smile in turn. God, I can't read. But I like that he's like, you're like, just sleep? He's like, <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> like, that's adorable. Gil, you should be able to just snuggle beside me and keep it in your pants, alright? Once in a while, I'd like to just snuggle with you, thanks. There was a lot I wanted to talk to him about, but I wasn't sure how to approach it. I just couldn't bring myself to tell him that I met someone who claimed to be his father. I mean, that's also a valid point. You're like, is Eugene really his dad? She should know at this point. At least... Oh, we're in chapter three already. Good for us. Um, you know what I mean? She should be well aware enough in hot water that... People are lying, manipulative assholes. Also, we're dating Mafia, and we, we're friends with Mafia. But, like, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? And all the shit we experienced in the last game. Hmm. Also, I wanted to point out... Okay, well, Chapter 1 was a bad apple. Chapter 2 was when it rains, it pours. And now this one is in hot water. Because I, I think I remember... Because I never read the chapter titles for you. Sorry. But I remember seeing Chapter 2 when I started this part. And I was like, oh, when it rains, it pours. And then this one's in hot water. So I had to go back chapter... I was like, are they all like what? They're not. Although apples have water in them, as do all fruits, you know, and humans and things. So there's that, I guess. <laughs> anyway. Colorful frittatas brightened up the table. As my fork cut through the egg, I saw that it was filled with carrots, potatoes, and cheese. That sounds delicious. While spreading marmalade on a piece of well-done well done toast, Gil shared with me what they discussed at yesterday's meeting. It seemed that the one who ordered my abduction was one of the commanders of the Lu Huang Hu. Lu Huan Hu. Lu Huang. See, I knew I was going to say with the G, pronounce the G. I knew I was going to fuck that up. Anyway, Lu Huan Hu, a man named Yuan. He'll also said that the Berlone, Ma Berlone Mafia agreed to work together against Yuan. Of note was the surprising disclosure that, for reasons unknown, the value as the key maiden was no longer a matter of concern. Even without any further explanation, that fact alone made me breathe a sigh of relief. That's true, because only in Dante's route did we find out what the whole point of that was. Right? Will you be going out again today? Yeah, it's a shame I can't stay with you, but I got a deal to work at the wharf today. I see. Well, please be careful, Gil. Miss Spacey, I have time until noon today. If you'd like, we can continue where we left off. Really? I'd love to, Oliver. Good. Unfortunately, Gilbert won't be around, which means he won't get in our way. Oliver, let me remind you again that she's my girl. Jealous is unbecoming of you, Gilbert. <laughs> oh, Oliver, you snarky little bitch. I love you. I love it. And I love the look on his face. He's like, jealousy is unbecoming of you, Gilbert. He winks and takes me away. You should be a little jealous, Gilbert, because I love Oliver. I'm here for both of you, to be honest. I'm going to be in the middle of this man sandwich. Gil frowned at Oliver's calm response. <laughs> oh. I couldn't help but smile as I watched their exchange. I had to wait like an hour for that. Close call. <laughs> Eugene! Sure hope I can see him today. He's not an easy fish to catch, seeing as how he's always in and out of that manner. Whoa! I quickly turned around upon seeing the familiar face. That was a close call. Better go a different way. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that, Punky? Anyway, I couldn't help but smile as I watched their exchange. There were a number of things making me feel uneasy, but Gil and the others had managed to resolve any difficulties in the past. So I made up my mind to trust that there'd be a positive outcome this time as well, and do what I could to support them. Well, 
I mean, this is supposed to be like an after story, so I really hope it's a positive outcome. No, that wouldn't be a replacement cost. Uh, so then, is it an exit value? Yes, you have a good memory. Well done. We'll stop after you finish the next one. I'm certain you'd say otherwise, but if I'm monopolizing you for too long, our boss may have another outburst of petulance. <laughs> I know you're only joking, but that sounds adorable. Oh, I wish I were only joking. <laughs> I love Oliver's face right now. He's so sweet. Just as I completed my final task, the door to the lounge opened. <laughs> How I wish I was fucking joking. Right? Yo, welcome back. We just finished here. Oh, really? And how about we have a lunch date? A little bit of fresh air should perk pick you up after all that work. Are you sure? I was surprised by his suggestion. Yeah, we haven't put the kibosh on the town killings just yet. The chances you're being targeted now are slim to none. And with me at your side, couldn't be any safer. What do you say? Will you go out with me? <laughs> if you say so. Thank you, Gil. Wouldn't I want to go out with him? Look at that fucking vest. I'm sorry, a man in a vest is just... Just as I accepted his offer, one of his men ran into the lounge. No! Gil, sorry, but... He hurriedly went to Gil and spoke in a lowered voice. Gil listened to what he had to say with a stern expression before turning his attention back to me. Sorry, seems like I got a guest. It won't be long, so just sit tight for a bit. Sure. Gil looked exceptionally tense as he made his way out of the lounge. This may take a while. Oliver smiled at me as he stood up from the sofa. I'll prepare some coffee. I trust it won't hurt your appetite for lunch. Thank you. Oliver stepped out, leaving me all alone in the lounge. Oh, Oliver didn't look tense at all. On the contrary, he looked very calm. Well, you can do the other side story. Okay, cool. Let's do this. Embers. Gilbert. Oh! -ho -ho! It's Eugene! What now? Didn't I tell you to leave town? Well, I can barely take two steps in this place, I see. I got someone from Chicago tailing me. It wasn't easy getting here, you know. Last thing I want is to step on your toes, so I meant to leave town like you said. Um, but things have changed. Someone's after the goods I'm holding. Then hand them over and ask them to spare your life. Come on, Gil. You can't be serious. They're not exactly the negotiating type, you know? I ain't got a chance against them. Do me a solid. Let me hide out here for the time being. If that's not possible, then buy the stuff off me, will ya? With money in my pocket, I can get out of this place in a flash. You'll never have to see my face again. I just don't trust this. Saying those drugs of yours are hot? Where did you get them? Well, you know... Say it. Well, I sort of borrowed them, so to speak. Don't tell me you stole them from your boss. <laughs> I always knew he was an idiot, but this was a new level of stupid. And for all these years, he still managed to creep under the bar of low expectations. Show it to me. Ah, oh, well, I got a sample right here. I mean everything. It's not like I have it all with me right now. Two kilos of that's worth more than its weight in gold. Where'd you hide it? Huh? Come on, you think I'd give that up to anyone? Even you? You want me to buy it, don't you? I need to make sure it's as real as you say. <gasps> Gil, don't start buying drugs! I can handle all the other shit, not the drugs. Stop that. I've been stolen drugs from the Chicago Mafia's... Oh, having stolen drugs from the Chicago Mafia since summer in Berlin would only spell trouble. There was a good chance that Visconti would be in the hot seat when Chicago found out who Eugene really was. I needed to quickly and safely send the goods back to them before it was too late. Oh, he's so sweet. He's gonna buy it and send it back. I no intention of saving Eugene's ass. Buying the drugs was my only option now. At least, that's what I thought, but... Well, now, Eugene... Giving you the chance to get your feet out of the fire and off to wherever God decides to chuck you. Well, see, uh, standard business practice calls for payment first. I'll hand over the goods after you pay up. Told you already. I want to see it and make sure it's good before the deal's set. 
And now I know what you're saying, but these goods are my lifeline. I can't be bar bearing my neck like this, you know. The hell did he get the audacity? I've never reacted like this, it only meant one thing. You got no intention of selling it, do you? You really think you can take the money and ditch this place with the goods? Ah, uh, well... His eyes nervously shifted away from me. You know what I should you know what you should do? I'm gonna give you money to get the fuck out of town. Don't ever come back. If you set foot in here again, or I find out you're still here in two days, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Kill? Just say it. Just do it. I will send someone from the Lao Shu or the Falzone family after you. I'm not gonna do it myself, I'm gonna have my friends do it. There's this guy, Eugene, I need you to whack him. Eugene, it's my dad. Just whack him. I like, well, I think I, you should have known. I actually, was I suspicious that they were related when Gil's like, I don't know his last name. I'm like, really? You don't know his last name? That seems sus. But I definitely wasn't expecting it to be your fucking dad. <laughs> uh, his eyes nervously shifted away from me. Couldn't say I was surprised that he was the same bottom feeding scum that he was before. Somehow, he always managed to disappoint. Get the hell out of here, Eugene. Hey, don't look at me like that. I got no other choice. The world runs on money. You must be making a fortune, so sharing some with me shouldn't... If I ever see your face in front of me again, you're dead. Nice. I actually, like, it had to take a lot for Gil to, like, actually threaten to kill his own father. Even though he thinks he's scum, it's still. Anyway, Oliver didn't look tense at all. On the contrary, he looked very calm. Maybe he already knew who this guest was. Still feeling somewhat disturbed, I decided to wait in the quiet lounge as requested. Because you don't want Eugene seeing you. Anyway, so we're going to stop here uh, and see what happens after. So that was, this is, this has been a grand old fucking time. I love this so much. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Thank you.